Hello and welcome to the Web Hosting Show, the voice of the web hosting world. This show is sponsored by Web Hosting Chat, your number one place for web hosting discussions. Check them out at www.webhostingchat.com. Who am I? Why, I am the man behind the voice of the web hosting world, Mitch Keeler. Last week, I received my first issue of the Web Hosts Industry Review magazine. I haven't gotten a chance to read the whole thing from front to back, but what I have read so far has been really great. As far as the comparisons go between the Web Host Industry Reviews magazine and Ping Zine, I don't think I can really make one. Both are really good magazines, and I believe both o- offer their content in their own ways. Neither is an exact copy of the other, and that, my friends, is a really, really good thing. Both have their own personalities, and I could see myself enjoying both of them for a very long time. There will be no web hosting show next week, because I'm taking a little bit of a vacation. Doing several of these shows now, I've done them for over a month at least, I think this one's show seven, It's really taking its toll. I mean, I could have never imagined how much work this show really is whenever I was first starting out. Don't worry, though. The web hosting show isn't going anywhere. If you're really hard up for something to listen to, you could always go back and check out some of the old episodes that we've done over the last few months. And by we, I do mean me and my multiple personalities. Yeah, I was thinking about doing a kind of best of episode, but heck, you could always just go back and re-listen to things right now. Maybe there will be a little bit more of a demand or a little bit more stuff to work with for a best of episode once we hit show 50 or 60. Right now, though, I'm just going to take one week off to, you know, kind of clear my blog and content writing mind hopefully get refreshed, and be back on the job next eh, Tuesday or Wednesday. There will be no web hosting show next Monday, but I will start writing on my blog again by Monday next week, I believe. I'm just going to take a total blogging vacation, I guess you could say. Since I am going on vacation, I guess you could say, I wanted to do something a little different for this week's episode. We're going to move away from the original format a little, and I'm just going to talk with you one-on-one about a few web hosting topics. Just think of this web hosting show episode as the web hosting show unplugged. So sit back, grab a loved one, and listen as I give you some of my thoughts about the web hosting world. There are a lot of web hosting businesses out there, and a lot of them look the same. Most of them have the same layout, but only a few names and graphics are changed to protect the innocent. It's been a long time since a web host has come around with something really different as far as, you know, visual layout is concerned, and a new way of, you know, looking at a web host's website. I don't know exactly what you could do differently. Maybe try not using your standard long table of features and prices. Maybe adding RSS feeds or, you know, work for new server situations or company news. You know, deliver us more content as a client and, you know, give us more to work with. Work harder to establish that kind of personal relations kind of line with your customer. And don't just think of your website as a static place to, you know, for people to go buy your stuff or get support. Then again, I mean, not a lot of web hosting based websites are really different either. Now, I don't know exactly what people could start doing differently to make the web hosting website kind of universe a little more different, but, well, I'm a big fan of the dig, what, D-I-G-G dot com, the dig website, where, you know, people just go in there and they post their news and comments and suggestions for news and things kind of get voted up or down 
depending on how many people dig it. Now, I could see this really working out if somebody was willing to, you know, innovate it for the web hosting kind of business world. I'd like to see somebody come up with a kind of dig-like website to where people could, you know, post just, I want basic stuff, like just the web host name, a link, a little bit of a bio. I don't want prices, I don't want unlimited thrown around on the website. 200 times I just want basic information a link and something that I can say I like this web host or I don't like this web host that way you could get a simple ranking system up so you could see you know who really is one of the most popular web hosts online and who really doesn't have a lot of people liking them this way, the people who are on top know they're on top, and the people who are on bottom know they have some work to do if they want to start getting up the proverbial web hosting ladder of success. Now, there would have to be some type of checks and balances in there as well, like limiting a person to be able to vote for one web host one time or something to that effect. Overall, though, I think it'd be a really neat idea. So if there's any web hosting firms or web hosting website kind of people that are listening to this show and are getting some ideas, I say give it a shot and make sure you let me know about it, and I'll be sure to at least give you one plug on this very show. Now, going back to the whole web hosting and RSS deal... I believe another innovation that's long overdue is, you know, just building in RSS kind of feeds and syndication into the web hosting world. I'm spoiled the checking feed demon, my feed reader of choice, several times a day. Yet there are still few web hosting based websites out there that provide RSS feeds to syndicate their content. Why? I'm not sure. Right now, I'll just have to go with ignorance of how much that RSS feeds can increase your readership. Even places like CNN and the New York Times are getting into it these days. Why is it that the web hosting community is still so much in the dark? Well, there are a few web hosting news and commentary websites that do get it out there, but really there's not that many. The same thing can go for web hosting forums, too. It's easy to add an RSS feed for each one of your smaller forums inside the big forum. This way, if somebody wanted to you know, check out one of your smaller forums, all they'd have to do is subscribe to the feed, and that way they'd be updated. As soon as something came up there, they wanted to go to the forums and, you know, rant about or say, you're wrong, or say, you're right, or just whatever they wanted to talk about with that certain thread. There's just so many things out there that you can do with RSS feeds these days. Come on, web host and community, I am begging you to jump on this bandwagon. I just, I don't know why it hasn't been done yet. Maybe after this honest-to-goodness plea to the web hosting industry, we'll see a couple of more jump on there. And, well, I've really got to commend the ones that have. I know that the Web Host Industry Review has totally, you know, redone their website. And I noticed that, you know, they're trying to make a bigger deal out of the fact that they're adding a couple of more RSS feeds for their content. Now it's the turn for web hosts to start doing it, web hosting forums to start doing it, and more web hosting news sites to start doing it. There are a lot of folks out there that are spending more time in their feed readers than they are their web browsers. Why shouldn't the web hosting industry try to market to those folks as well? Well, hopefully, over time, more web hosting websites and web hosting forums will start to catch up with the trends. In a recent edition of the Web Host Industry Review magazine, actually that one I was talking about in the first of the show, they talked about Texas pretty much being the place to be if you want to be involved in the web hosting world. Since there are so many data centers and hubs and all that down here, 
This makes it the perfect place for a web hosting professional to live. And you, you know what? I couldn't agree more. For those that haven't figured that out yet by my accent, <laughs> this show is coming to you live from the Lone Star State itself. Yes, I am proud to say that I am born and bred a Texan. Now, I also agree that places like Rackspace, The Planet, CI Host, and EV1 servers down here, it's just, you know, a good place to set yourself up if you want to be involved in the web hosting world. There are just so many possibilities and chances out here for web host enthusiasts. So, you know, come on down. We're real friendly down here. Another article that got my attention in this edition of the Web Host Industry Review Magazine is the one that covers, you know, what should you do if you die and how would it affect your web hosting business. I'm not sure how many web hosts out there have a backup plan just in case, you know, they die. I think, you know, this might be something that some web hosts out there might want to, you know, contact their lawyer about and make sure they have a good plan in place. I mean, would your web hosting company go to your next of kin? Would it go to your highest ranking sales executive? Would it go to Grandma Ethel that doesn't even know how to turn her computer on? These are, you know, things that hopefully a big web hosting business has thought of. If you haven't, you know, I'm not going to mention any names on this show, but, you know, you should go ahead, contact, you know, any kind of legal representative you may have, and you might want to work out some kind of plan of what would happen just in case, you know, just like a jug of milk, you kind of go past your due date and start to sour. I got asked something last week in the old email format, and I thought I would discuss it on today's show. What do I think about free web hosting as far as it being a profitable comparison with, you know, regular selling of web hosting? Well, I know what you're thinking. Free web hosting, by definition, isn't profitable, is it? You know, that's why they call it free web hosting. You're not supposed to be making any money from it. Well, there are ways of making money with it. In a whole, though, I'd have to say that, you know... Unless you're a big honking company, I don't think you're going to be making much. Big companies can afford, you know, to spend a little more and eat up a little more of the cost. But smaller guys, they're not able to, you know, do the same things that bigger web hosts are able to do. Now, there are two ways of doing things. You can either place ads on the person's website... Or you could, you know, use their error pages to put ads in them. Either way, you're, I don't think you're going to be profitable from just having five or ten free web hosting accounts up there. The numbers, they're just not there. Now, if you had like a thousand to ten thousand free hosting accounts with all ad placements right smack all over them, then it might swing around to your favor. What is the cost, though, for keeping all those free hosting accounts up and running? See, now that's where it gets back to you. You'll either have to cut down on the re reliability for these free hosting accounts, or you'll have to raise their own cost. You know, it just doesn't all add up. There goes your profits. Back out the window again, because you can't afford to support or manage free web hosting accounts. So, is it profitable? I would say, you know, if you signed up thousands of accounts and cut support and reliability for each account, it could be done. But I would per probably say, uh, don't bother. These days, if you offer something good, people are more than willing to pay for it. The, for the rest of the folks out there that don't want to spend money on web hosting... There are already places like Angel Fire and GeoCities to keep those kind of people happy. I say, for good web hosting, I want to pay for it. I'm happy to pay for something if it's good. 
you know, I can get something for free, but I'm not going to expect that it's wonderful and new and great and innovative. I'd rather, you know, pay my $5 a month or $10 a month for my hosting account and know, hey, I paid $5 for this, so it had better be good. Well, that's it for the web hosting show Unplugged. Let me know what you think about this episode or any of the past six that I've done so far by sending me an email at mitch at mitchkeeler.com. Remember to mark your calendars because the web hosting show will be back on the air April 11th. Next week, we'll, well, we won't be doing more of the same. We'll be doing a little vacation time for the one and only voice of the web hosting world. If you have any segment ideas or if you'd like to get on this show yourself, now would be the greatest time to, you know, go ahead and drop me that email, mitch at mitchkeeler.com, and let me know what's on your mind. I want to hear from each and every person listening to this show in one way or another in this next week. I want to know if you like what I'm doing, if you hate what I'm doing, if you think you could do this better than me. I want to hear ideas, segment ideas. I want to hear what you want to hear from me. You could also check out our official forums for the web hosting show as well. I, you can find those over at Web Hosting Chat. Web Hosting Chat can be found at www.webhostingchat.com. I'm Mitch Keeler, and this has been the Web Hosting Show, the voice of the web hosting world.